one. Torino, the first capital of Italy, an adventure lasting almost four centuries and thousands of kilometers ended here. Today, one of the most valuable manuscripts in history is also on Mars, the last stop of a journey full of twists and turns through time and space. Leonardo died in France in 1519. His legacy passed through the hands of kings, collectors, merchants, and thieves. 7,000 pages of observations and discoveries were gradually dispersed, forgotten, taken apart, sold, stolen, and given away, including what we now call the Codex on the Flight of Birds. Now and then, there are fleeting mentions of it. It turned up in Milan, but Napoleon took it to Paris as a trophy. It wound up in England, but some of the pages were lost. Then, a rich and passionate Russian historian managed to recover and reassemble a larger part of the Codex. Never letting it out of his sight as it traveled through Europe, he took it all the way back to Siberia. He decided it was a gift of fit for a queen and presented it to Queen Margherita of Italy. The final stop on its long journey was Torino's Royal Library. The year was 1893. As luck would have it, the few missing pages were found. The complete codex was finally reunited with its author, at least virtually, because the Royal Library is also home to Leonardo's famous self-portrait. Buon pomeriggio dal telegiornale delle scienze, puntata davvero speciale oggi. May 2011, a special broadcast of Leonardo, the science and news program of the Italian television RAI, is dedicated to the genius from Vinci. The guest is Charles Elacci, director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Well, Leonardo is the ultimate genius. You know, as scientists and explorers, we always looked at him at the model yeah. of what he has done, particularly his treatise on flight, mm. you know. And he basically put the foundation of us leading to traveling to Mars. Charles Salachi took part in a symbolic encounter five centuries in the making between the great Renaissance artist and engineer and the head of the engineers in Pasadena, the yeah. ones who drove the science of flight all the way to a new frontier in our exploration of space. Ed ecco il famoso codice del volo di Leonardo da Vinci. You can open it, puoi aprirlo? You could live through, cominciare a sfogliarlo, poi lo vediamo meglio. This is amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah, all the drawing that he has done. It's hard to believe that I'm holding you know, probably the most important document about flight. Why don't we fly to Mars? Oh, that sounds like a superb idea. I think we can uh, scan this uh, document, put it on a chip, and put it on the rover that will be launching to Mars this, later this year. So uh, we'll talk with the Italian Space Agency, the head of the agency, to request from NASA to actually do that. Face. August 5th, 2012. Curiosity carries Leonardo's codex and self-portrait to Mars, digitally, on a chip. What a fitting journey for the genius whose whole life was driven by curiosity. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. <laughs> Thank you. 
The first truly scientific study of flight is 18 pages long, written in Leonardo's notorious backwards handwriting on paper already used for earlier drawings. The notebook is so small that Leonardo may have carried it in a pocket. The date, 1505, tells us that at the same time he was studying birds and taking notes on their flight, he was painting the Mona Lisa. The kite, the bird that fascinated Leonardo. This thinker who flew over the boundaries between disciplines, whose genius ranged from art to physics, from anatomy to astronomy, had a great dream, to make men fly. From the wing of a kite, he envisioned that of a flying machine, but first he had to understand the secret of flight. Leonardo had long observed the water in motion and he was the first to draw air as a fluid. In the Codex, he describes the concept of gravity. Newton would arrive to that only two centuries later. He identified the physical forces generated by a wing in air, and he was just on the verge of understanding the difference in pressure on the surface of the wing. But that's not all. The Codex shows that he understood how the kite maneuvers and changes attitude. He drew a pilot in a kind of a cockpit and imagined the movements to support the flight. He even devised the first airbag in history, actually a kind of wineskin filled with water to cushion the pilot in case of a fall. And who would have imagined that the pages of such sublime intuitions also contained a shopping list? There is a chicken that cost Leonardo two soldi, but right next to the list is his extraordinary prophecy. Piglierà il primo volo, il grande uccello, empiendo l'universo di stupore, empiendo di sua fama tutte le scritture e gloria eterna al nido ove nacque.